Greetings, 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 one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the night shift. It's Tuesday night, it's healthy love night. How you doing? I want to welcome you each and every one to the show. Big ups to those across the pond, one harmony radio. Top of the morning to you guys over there in the UK. Big up to those locked in, locked in on WGLRO, home of the Donnie Walker Show, taking you from the sheets to the streets on the People Station, touching from Detroit to Denmark and all points in between. Big ups to those on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com, where Clinton Lindsay takes over the air chair from 12 to 3, Monday through Friday. And uh, of course, big ups to those on PEMGTV.com. And right here at the home of the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew, KevinStew.com. So glad to have you. I couldn't do it without you. And guess what? You have my word. I wouldn't even try. Mission. it a little matter and freezy. It's called boom. Every girl just boom. Boom like this speaker, make, make the two touch boom like this, oi boom. Boom, boom boom like this speaker, the left is the bass and the right is the treble, boom Y'all boom like this speaker, make the two touch boom like this speaker, boom Y'all boom like this speaker, hold on You ready, hey, when you lonely girl give me a call Go, go, go down, girl, boom like a ball Summer, winter, spring or fall Bend your back, make sure you don't fall Hey, we girl, boom Ah, sticky girl Every girl just boom, boom like this speaker. Make the two touch, boom like this, oi boom, boom like this speaker. The left is the bass and the right is the treble, boom. Girl boom like this speaker. Make the two touch, boom like this speaker, boom. Girl boom like this speaker. Hold on, so we tell them back, back down to the ground like a parachute. Put down both hands and send up both foot. Bumper not small like a grapefruit. Left touch, right touch, every, every, like every, every girl do a gymnastic on your man and Uvesa and them cover basket. Now roll it, roll it. Every girl just boom, let we go, let we go. Make the two touch boom, boom like this speaker. Make the two touch boom like this. Oi boom, boom like this speaker. The left is the bass and the right is the treble. Boom, girl boom like this speaker. Make the two touch boom like this speaker. Boom, girl boom like this speaker. Hold on, you ready? Hey, when you lonely girl give. Go down, girl, boom like a ball. Summer, winter, spring or fall. Bend your back, make sure you don't fall. Hey, queen, 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 girl, boom. Ah, sticky girl, boom. Ah, fluffy or thin girl. Mm. Wind up your boodoo. Every boodoo. girl just boom. Want to say hello to those tuned in on Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Big up still, my sponsor for this segment of the show, Paul C Media Group. When being in the moment is priceless, you wanna give them a link. 754-999-6020. Or check them out on paulcmg.com. They can take care of everything that you see right here on kevinstew.com and so much more. You have a website. You want to create a website. You want somewhere to host your website. You want to do streaming on your website. You have an event. You want to stream an event. You see how many things I can help you with? If you want to take it a step further and have your own broadcasting station. And you want to go live like I do. Yeah, well, look at kevinstew.com pulsemg.com 754-999-6020 contact Pulse Media Group they got the hook up for you every girl just boom boom like this speaker make the two touch boom like this oi boom so it's healthy love night speaker the left is the bass and the right is the treble boom girl boom like this speaker make and uh tonight uh boom girl boom like this speaker uh, okay, and I have to wonder what is going on. You know, COVID affects so many things. You know, we we, we it's kind of puzzling. You know, for the most part, we hear of the deaths, we hear of the 
the the the cases not too often do we hear of the other little things and uh, the little people um the babies and again you know i'm i'm going through i'm checking out my my usual resource for my health show mercola.com those who don't like it well so be it you know you don't like it you don't like it that's your thing that's fine but i'm checking out mercola and um <laughs> enough people pregnant is I'm, I'm not from that angle <laughs> I want to say hi to those tuned in on Facebook Live. Remember, it's only temporary over here. KevinStew.com is the place to be. Jump on into the stew pot where we keep things bubbling. For those of you who don't know what the stew pot is, you go to KevinStew.com. Others call it a chat room. But we're fancy over here, so we call it the stew pot, okay? So get with it. Learn, learn the jargon and know what it stands for. The stew pot is what other people just simply call a chat room. But we're fancy. So... Come on over, um, come interact. I know some of you like the comfort of, of, of being on Facebook where everything is simple, but don't worry, it's only a segment, and then it's gone, it's done. <laughs> so, uh, sorry to, to, to hurt your feelings, don't, it's, it's not chief standard tonight. All right, so, it was interesting, I, I found it interesting I came across this, this bit of information. Thank you, Jennifer. For sharing. I, I truly appreciate love it. How are you doing? So I came across this information on Miracola looking at, at, at SIDS and uh, um the premature births and the rates since COVID. Now I thought it was interesting that someone would, 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 would put together a comparison like this. But, alas, it has been done. And there are some doctors that have been saying, you know what, this is something to, to, to take note of. No, it will not be permanently on FB, no. Nope, nope, nope. That's what KevinStew.com is for. So... I come on Facebook to remind you all that KevinStew.com is there. You have the chat room. You have ways to call in. You have the video. You're good to go. I just come on Facebook to remind you all that it is there. So, a six and a half week old baby from Hartford, Connecticut whose death was reported to be related to the coronavirus, was infected with the virus. But the cause of death was determined to be sudden, unexpected death in infancy, or SIDS. The office of the chief medical examiner confirmed that. Infants sometimes die of un unexplained causes and or unsafe sleeping conditions when there's no definitive cause of death these deaths are typically ruled undetermined or sudden unexpected unexplained death in infancy now officials confirmed the infant was infected with COVID-19 by sending lung tissue to the CDC it is not clear how the virus may affect infants, though. And therefore, it is unclear how the COVID-19 infection may have contributed to the baby's death, if it contributed at all. But notice, at the, at the onset, at the beginning of it all, they said, they pretty much said, rule this baby as, as the youngest person whose death was related to the coronavirus now here is the issue that i have with deaths reported 
as a result of COVID. It's kind of like people don't die of anything else anymore. When people caught the flu and had pneumonia and they had a heart condition, they died of the heart condition. When they had respiratory issues, they died of the respiratory issues. Now, since COVID has come along, people are dying as a result of COVID. And the other things don't seem to get put in, into perspective or on the list at all. That is, is, is my concern. And that is where, that is the part of it that I, I keep singing on. Um, stream on all platforms. <laughs> you know, Ebony, you and I are going to have to talk. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, and again, no. <laughs> so, while the global lockdowns for the COVID pandemic have had far-reaching ramifications, not all side effects have been bad. And this seems to be one of the cases where uh, this is not such a bad side effect at all, if indeed it is connected. Two interesting changes noted by doctors around the world are that the dramatic reduction in, one, premature births, and the reduction in sudden infant death syndrome. Deacon Harold explained, about one in 10 US babies is born early, one in 10. Pregnancy usually lasts about 40 weeks and any delivery before 37 weeks is considered preterm. The cost to children and their families financially, emotionally, and in the long-term health effects can actually be pretty steep. It can be pretty great. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, babies born premature, especially before 32 weeks, are at higher risk of vision and hearing problems, cerebral palsy, and, yes, death. The best way to avoid these costs would be to prevent early births in the first place. If you can. Curiously, during March and April of this year, while most of the world enforced more or less strict stay-at-home orders, premature births plummeted by 90% in Denmark and 73% in Ireland, and nearly halved in Canada. Those are some big numbers. Now, the flip side of that is, I guess, uh, like, like Ebony had said, the pregnancy rates probably went up. <laughs> Which, uh, not necessarily a bad thing either. Dr. Roy Phillip, a, a, a neonatologist at University Maternity Hospital Limerick in Ireland, told the Deacon Herald he has never seen anything like these numbers in his two-decade career. Now, is that really as a result of COVID? It makes you go, hmm. You know, it, it kind of makes you wonder. And the wandering is with good reason. Now, unusual reductions have also been reported in other countries, including Australia, the Netherlands, and here in the US. The Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, for example, had about 20% fewer preemies than is typical for March. As noted in the Irish study posted on the preprint server Med MedRxiv, on June 5, 2020, and it, it reads, an unprecedented reduction in preterm birth, PTB, of very low birth weight 
infants who was infants was observed in one health region of Ireland during the oh let me read that again an unexpected reduction in preterm birth of very of infants was observed in one health region of Ireland during the COVID lockdown. Potential determinants of this unique temporal uh, temporal trend reside in the sim the summative socio environmental impact of the COVID nineteen di dictated lockdown. Our findings, if mirrored in other regions that have adopted similar measures to combat the pandemic, demonstrate the potential to elevate these implicated interdependent behavioral and socio-environmental modifiers to positively influence PTB rates globally. Basically, what I'm getting from that is that they're saying you're not moving around as much, there's not much as much pollutants in the air. The chances of taking carrying your child to term increase so i i have a lot more information to go through but let's have this thought lower the stress rates in our communities and increase healthy baby rates so I'm simple enough. I'm no doctor, and it's not rocket science. During the lockdown, there was less stress on the body. There were less pollutants in the air. You got to, well, there was less exercise too. More other things for some people. But it, it, it kind of points in the direction where... It makes sense with the reduced pre uh, preme premature birth rates. But how does that affect SIDS though? That is that is the other part of it. Yeah, we haven't gotten there and I, I might be rushing it a little bit, but it, it you kinda have to ask and you have to wonder. 773-789 Stu gets you in touch. 773-789-7839. You can call, you can text, you can WhatsApp, you can Skype me if you're overseas and want to chime in. Kevin.stu is a Skype handle. So many options. Jump on over to kevinstu.com. Jump into the pot and comment there. Uh, for the time being, you can comment on Facebook Live. But, you know, I want to know what you think. As I go through, you know, share your views. So, million dollar questions. Why have premature births dropped? Well, it is still not known why <laughs> the premature birth rate has dropped so dramatically. Doctors discussing the issue on social media with their associates have brought up the possibility that it might be because pregnant women have had more rest and less, less work stress. There you have it. I'm, I'm a genius. <laughs> While one can hardly say the pandemic, pandemic has brought a general reduction in stress, because it, it has actually brought quite a bit of stress, thinking that, well, based on the news that we've been getting, that's pretty stressful. When you're focusing on the deaths and the, the number of cases only, you're not looking at the recovery. You're just looking at deaths and saying, oh, the death rates has go have gone up and there more people have died this month than have died last month. And died from what, though? Yeah, that. Now, while one can hardly say the pandemic has brought a general reduction in stress, pregnant women may still have felt greater than normal support from family members. It takes the village. This is where the village comes in. And, and you can see in the lockdown, there was a lot of village work. There really was. Although you were socially distant, 
there was still quite a bit of village work. Hey, Erica. Um, yeah, so COVID-19 comes with a little bit of advantage along the way. A lot of people have reconnected with family members and friends as a result of the lockdown because now, and, and, and a lot of people have reconnected with, with talents that they've had and shelved because they've gotten so busy out in the world. Busy. Now, maybe, perhaps, the mothers got greater amounts of sleep. Staying at home may also have protected them against in infections in general, which can increase your risk of pregnancy complications. And other possibilities include significant reduction in air pollution. Have I not been saying these things? I need to be consulted. <laughs> I really do. But again, it's not rocket science. Because we have, we, we, we do so much on a daily basis. There's all this hustle and this bustle and we need to get here and we need to go there and we need to, and we need to go and we need to go and we need to go. Now people are sitting at home and they're going on their devices. So the goal that they need to go now is I need to go to this site. I need to, to, to send this message. I need to send this email. I need to... It's not the running around, the physical running around that is happening. And in my opinion, that makes a big difference. Now, the other part of it comes from a medical side. One factor, factor that has not been openly addressed is the reduction in maternal vaccinations. And, you know, those of you who listen to me regularly know that, that, that vaccinations is, is, is kind of a sore subject for me. No pun intended. One factor that has not... Uh, this is the one factor that, that hasn't been given a whole lot of attention. Now, while... There hasn't been the ability to locate any statistics on maternal vaccinations um, as it relates to the rates before and during the pandemic. It seems reasonable to assume that many may not have gotten otherwise what are considered routine vaccinations for the simple fact that non-emergency medical appointments were in many areas during the certain time frames just not happening they were cancelled so if you didn't have a, an emergency situation you weren't going to the hospital the hospital wasn't they weren't going to see you at a doctor's office because the doctor's office was closed also so these non-emergency cases they weren't happening these vaccinations kind of fell under the umbrella of these non-emergency cases hmm so now there's another argument in the midst of all of this that asks the question, why do we need these maternal vaccinations? Pum, pum, pum. Health officials have also expressed worry about dropping childhood vaccination rates during the pandemic. So it is likely, but not confirmed, it is likely that maternal vaccination rates have declined as well. In California, for example, Childhood immunization rates plunged by 40% in the weeks after the first lockdown orders went into effect. While the scientific evidence is far from conclusive, some studies suggest maternal vaccinations might raise the risk of preterm birth. One such study published in the journal Pharmacy World and Science in 2007 found it raised the risk by anywhere from 4% to 25% or 14% on average. And according to this paper, quote, data mining had indicated that maternal vaccination, among other factors, might be related to preterm birth. 
The following regression analysis showed that women who reported being vaccinated shortly before or during gestation had a slightly higher risk of giving preterm birth as compared to the non-vaccinated group. Now, if this information is true, then we come back to the question of the vaccinations. Whether the association between maternal vaccination and the risk of preterm birth found here is causal or not deserves further studies. Data mining, especially with additional refinements, may be a valuable and very efficient tool to screen large databases for relevant information which can be used in cl clinical and public health research. Now, of course, with that comes the other argument. The argument that we run the risk of bringing back certain types of diseases. But which one is more important? Yeah, that's, 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 that's one of the questions too. Which one is more important? Do we want our, our children being born healthy? Or, and can we weigh that against uh, a possible outbreak of some other virus or disease which is said to be controlled by way of these vaccinations because that's the other part of it are they really controlled by some of these vaccinations and I'm not anti-vaccine don't get me wrong I'm just anti-vaccines that don't work Another study published in 2016 pointed out the difficulty in assessing the available data. Heterogeneity across 16 studies reported preterm birth precluded meta-analysis. In a subgroup of the highest quality studies, two reported significantly increased preterm birth um, risk ratios from 2.4 to 4.0 following severe 2009 pandemic H1N1 influenza illness. Whereas those assessing mild to moderate um, PH1N1 or seasonal influenza found no association. Five studies of SGA, small for gest gestational age, that's what SGA is. Five studies of SGA birth showed no discriminable, sorry, no discernible uh, patterns with respect to influenza disease severity. Five studies, no discernible patterns with respect to the flu. Two fetal death studies were sufficient of sufficient quality and size to permit meaningful interpretation and both reported an increased risk of fetal death following maternal PH1N1 disease um, which is RR what's that the, the risk reduced risk 1.9 for mild to moderate disease and 4.2 for severe disease So that was, that was uh, information extracted from the available data in um, a study published in 2016. Again, <laughs> you know, y y you kind of have to look back at the information that we have been given at the time and compare it with what is going on now. Because often we forget some of the information that we've been given and we forget who it was that gave it to us these are some of the things we need to pay attention to what 
the reasons we were given some of the information. What was what was what was the, the, the drive behind the sharing of that information? Was there a new vaccine released shortly thereafter? If it was said, hey, you know, uh, the numbers of this virus have gone up and we need to control it. So here is a control method. Boom, we get a new vaccine. Because really and truly, you look at it, I, I, I have said it over and over. The vaccine schedule that these children have today versus what we had as a child as children significantly different here it is someone is, is commenting in the stew pot they scare us into getting every vaccine possible for our babies they claim that when our children get older they might be at risk of getting some disease getting the disease and there it is it's scare tactics and i'm not saying again i'm not saying I'm anti-vaccine. I'm just anti-vaccines that don't work, especially if the only purpose of the vaccine is to raise funds for those creating it. Yeah. That's a bit of a concern for me. And that's the thing that really upsets me. We're going to take a quick little break and we're also going to say goodbye to Facebook Live. So those of you tuned in on Facebook, come on over. KevinStew.com. I made it easy for you now. I put the link to the site in the description. So it's not like you have to go type anything. Just click on the link. Click KevinStew.com. And boom. You're at KevinStew.com. And you're automatically in the chat room. Incognito. Yeah. You're just a number. Unless you change your name. Or you change your number to a name, then I, I I can only address you by that number. So I may know where you where in the world generally you are, but other than that, I I don't know who it is. So thank you guys on Facebook Live for sharing and sticking around and commenting. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow for another segment. Uh, for in, 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 in real talk. But until then, come on over, kevinstew.com. All right? Gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Corsi Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30 second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulse Media Group. Hi, my name is Andrew Smallin, and I'm running to be the next sheriff of Broward County, Florida. I was born in Jonestown, Jamaica, and immigrated to the United States when I was eight years old. Following in my father's footsteps, who served as a soldier in the Vietnam War, I served as an officer in the United States Marine Corps during Operation Desert Shield and helped keep America safe. You see, all my life, I have kept people safe by serving as a Broward Sheriff's deputy, 
a school resource officer, and the chief of police of Lauderdale, Florida. As an associate dean of criminal justice, I am helping to teach the next generation of law enforcers how to keep their communities safe. I'm Khalib Thompson. I am David Muir. And we are the co-founders of a cultural nonprofit in Florida called Island Space. For many reasons, now more than ever, we need the support of our communities. As Caribbean America, we have the unique ability to claim everyone from the island as members of our Caribbean American family. We are working to create a home for that family. The Island Archives will become an internationally recognized museum of history. Where visitors can learn that although we are unique, we are truly stronger together. Learn more at islandspacefl.org. It takes an entire village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Palace has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 US dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace, preserving young minds for posterity. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is working to help keep you and your community safe from the threat of novel or new coronavirus. Take the following everyday steps to help avoid the spread of all respiratory viruses. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue Throw the tissue away and then wash your hands. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects or surfaces, such as remote controls and doorknobs. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. And stay home if you are sick. Call your health care provider if you develop fever, cough, or difficulty breathing. For more tips, visit cdc.gov. Hey, yo, this is Caraman to let you know that right about now you are logged on to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. Don't move.
This is the sound of incognito. The track is called Change. I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor for this segment, Althea Su and her healing heavenly hands. Althea is a licensed massage therapist that comes to you operating out of Broad County, North Miami Dade and South Palm Beach counties. She brings her table, she brings her oils, she brings her healing heavenly hands. Few requests outside of paying her, of course. One of them being that you get off her table when she's done and go find somewhere else to sleep. And in these times of COVID crisis, if you can have your COVID records, uh, you know, your tests on point. As a matter of fact, just send her an email with, your, with a copy of your COVID test to say, hey, you know what, I'm clean. I've been staying home and away from other people that could possibly get me sick. Uh, then you give her, so you email her at theolator at att.net. And then you call her at 954-655-9000 and you say, hey, I sent you an email. Please uh, go ahead and schedule my, my, my massage. Yeah, that's how it's that's how it goes. See, when you when you do it that way, you know, it's it's really hard for her to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to go. No, she, now that she knows that you are you're good to go, and you didn't lie. All being well. Uh, then she'll feel much more comfortable coming to see you, and you'll be good to go, because. <laughs> Goodness knows she needs to make sure that she is COVID free. So uh, everybody will benefit. Yeah? Yeah. So coming back to the matter at hand, welcome back to those of you joining us. <laughs> Question in the in the stew pot. Why yes, yes, hit the ground running. Why would we why would we want to keep putting synthetic drugs in our bodies? then we're left with a myriad of side effects. Yes, we are. But... <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm going to sum this up real easy. The healthcare business or the wellness business in the United States, as I know it, and this is, this is the view of, of Kevin Stew. It's it's not the view of, of Mercola.com, Dr. Richard Mercola, or anybody's information. It's not Dr. Dr. J. Love's um, views, Dr. Jenny Stone. No, it's these are Kevin Stew's views. And, yeah, it, it's that easy. Go ahead and call her. Um... As long as you're in Broad County, North Miami Dade, or South Palm Beach County, are you coming to any of those places? Give her a call. Work it out. Um, but yeah, so the, the wellness business is treat the symptoms. It's a treat the symptoms business. And as long as you can treat the symptoms long enough to earn a profit, to turn a profit, then you're good to go. It's as simple as that. That, in my opinion, is the, the formula to the healthcare business. Because if that were not the case, then you'd have a lot more drugs treating the cause than the symptom. Which would really mean a lot less drugs on the market. Because the cause is taken care of, you don't need it anymore. 
See? That's how that works. An article in Korean Wellness also highlights another curious trend. According to a Health Choice White Paper by Amy Becker and Mark Blacksill, published June 18, 2020, the death rate among children under the age of 18 in the U.S. has mysteriously dropped during the lockdowns. From an average of 700 per week to fewer than 500 per week. And this is during the months of April and May. I guess uh, one argument could be that there is no bullying going on in schools. So there's no reason for anybody to, to want to kill themselves or anybody else. But we're talking about younger than, well, in my, for the, for the sake of this particular show, we're looking at those younger than the 13 to 18 age group. Now, while Be Becker and Blacksill admit there is still no specific data on the SIDS trend during the pandemic, the data shows that this drop is related to a drama dramatic reduction in infant death specifically. Not older children, not teens. Korean wellness brings up the possibility that reduced vaccination rates may have played a role by reducing the number of infants dying from SIDS. So now it comes back to that whole vaccination thing. That's this. See, who's a mellow out. <laughs> so, sudden infant death syndrome or crib death, cot death. If if you're in the UK and Australia, yeah, you know, they don't in the US they call them cribs. Um, in the UK and that part of the world, in Australia they call them cots. Um, if the death is sudden, unexplained. Um, and or an un unexplained death of an infant under one year old. That's why you talk about SIDS. All right. It is a leading cause of death for babies between one and twelve months old, according to the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. Perhaps the best evidence of the infant death and vaccination linkage occurred in Japan. In Japan, between 1970 and 1974, 37 infants died after DPT vaccinations. Alarmed medical doctors in one um, prof I'm sorry. Al alarmed medical doctors in one prefecture boycotted the vaccine. The boycott spread to the entire country. Wow. I didn't even know about that. 1970 and 1974. The Japanese government decreed that the minimum age for vaccination was to be changed from the American vaccine schedule to 4, 6, and 12 months to 2 years. Alright, let me say something about this before I move on. As far as I can recall, even in Jamaica, babies typically didn't, or infants typically didn't start getting vaccinations until about after age two. There's a reason for that. In those first two years of development, that child is getting their immunity from the mother, which is why um, breastfeeding is important. Here is one of the things, again, it comes back to what is happening in the United States. Looking at how the U.S. is structured, it's always about go, 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 earn this money, make this money, make this money. What, 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 what does that now cause? You have mothers staying at home less and having that bonding, one, bonding time with that child, and two, that nurturing child no nurturing time with that child nurturing through things like breastfeeding and then the diet is so off again that 
even the breastfeeding is difficult. So now here it is. You have this infant being given a vaccination at ages 2, 4, 6, and 12 months. I tell you this, for my boys, I delayed it as long as I could. Because it affected them negatively. They, they always got sick after their vaccinations. Always. And the amount of children that have had problems, it's, it's, it's staggering. But the problem, the other problem is there is nothing that can be done about it because there's, they have protection. You can't sue the company that makes the vaccines. The vac th th they have the disclaimer that, listen, <laughs> you something may or may not happen and if it does there's nothing you can do about it that's basically how it, it translates into layman's terms if you ask me and that's probably why people don't ask me but here it is <laughs> the Japanese government back in the 70s said listen this 2, 4, 6 and 12 month thing that the US is doing no, nah, we're not doing it that child has to be two years old before we, they're, they're going to start getting vaccinations. That makes sense. This that is happening in the U.S. And, you know, you give an individual something enough or enough times. What happens is that they become depend dependent on it. And it doesn't really matter what that thing is. If there's soda, then they, you give them enough sodas, then they feel like they can't do without soda. Like me, right now I feel like I, I, I can't do without water. Really, really and truly, nobody can do without water. <laughs> but I haven't had a soda in forever. In fact, drinks that are made with high fructose corn syrup, I can taste the, I was going to say the, the falseness, <laughs> but I can, I, the, the fact that it's not real ingredients, I can taste it. And I guess it's because I've stayed away from it from so, for so long. I am I'm no longer used to the taste. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so at all. In fact, I encourage everybody to to to, to cut down on these drinks. Because it, they also play a part. Somebody mentioned uh, I don't even remember where it was that I heard it. Um soda in a baby bottle. That is, that is where we're at now. The babies are being fed sodas in their baby bottles. At least when my children when, when, were, were babies, they would get juice, real juice, in their bottles. Now they're getting sodas in their baby bottles. And we don't see where this is a problem. Anyway, so I went off on a tangent. Let me bring it back for a moment. Or maybe I should just stay on the tangent and bring it back after the next break. All right, let me bring it back. So, again, Japan said, hey, two years old. Now, remarkably, after banning vaccinations for babies under the age of two in Japan, sudden infant death syndrome virtually disappeared. Gone. In the years that followed, Japan became known for having the lowest infant death rate in the world. In contrast, the U.S. has the highest infant mortality rate and the highest vaccination rate as well. Do you think that's a coincidence? They seem to be related, in my opinion. Again, my show, I can't have that opinion. Infant vaccinations improve health and save lives right 
Well, if that is the case, why do our statistics not support those claims? As noted in a 2011 study looking at the possibility that vaccines might be causing biochemical and synergistic toxicity resulting in higher mortality. In 2009, five of the 34 nations with the best IMRs required 12 vaccine doses, the least amount while the U.S. required 26 vaccine doses, the most of any nation. Among the 34 nations analyzed, those that require the most vaccines tend to have the worst infant mortality rates. If you were wondering what IMRs are. So, we then must ask important questions. Is it possible that some nations are requiring too many vaccines for their infants and the additional vaccines are toxic burdens on their health? Are some deaths that are listed within the 130 infant mortality death categories really deaths that are associated with over-vaccination? That's a good question. Here's another one. Are some vaccine-related deaths hidden within the death tables? Now, prior to contemporary vaccine programs, crib death was so infrequent that was not mentioned in infant mortality statistics. In the United States, national immunization campaigns were initiated in the 1960s. For the first time in history, most, of, most U.S. infants were required to receive several doses of DPT, polio, measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines. Shortly thereafter, in 1969, medical certifiers presented a new medical term, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Here came SIDS. And it hasn't left since. Now, there is some evidence that a subset of infants may be more susceptible to SIDS shortly after being vaccinated. For example, Torch found that two-thirds of babies who had died from SIDS had been vaccinated against DPT. And this was just prior to their death. Now, of these 6.5% died within 12 hours of vaccination, 13% died, died within 24 hours, 26% within 3 days, and 37%, 67%, and 70% within 1, 2, and 3 weeks, respectively. So, the mere fact that a child made it through week 1 doesn't mean that they're going to make it through week three after getting these vaccinations. Because the majority, 70% of them that died, died within week three. Now, if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. The U.S. Childhood Immunization Schedule requires 26 vaccine doses for infants aged less than one year old. The most in the world. Yet 33 nations have better infant mortality rates. Using linear regression, the immunization schedules of these 34 nations were examined and a correlation coefficient of 0 0.7 was found between Im infant mortality rates and the number of vaccine doses routinely given to infants. When, no when nations were grouped into five different vaccine dose ranges, 12 to 14, 15 to 17, 18 to 20, 21 to 23, and 24 to 26, 98.3% 
of the total variance in infant mortality rates was explained by the unweighted linear regression model. These findings demonstrate a counterintuitive relationship. Nations that require more vaccine doses tend to have higher infant mortality rates. So, if the information is there that says, hey, you know, these higher rates kind of mean people are going to be dying a whole lot more. These children stand the risk of dying a whole lot more than the children that, that are not receiving these high vaccine ranges or these high vaccine um, scheduled doses. So what do we do? We, do we increase the vaccines? Because uh, it is said that the vaccines are needed to prevent what? Something that... Because remember, the parents of these children were also vaccinated. So did it wear off for the parents? Don't they pass on some immunity to their children? Don't these mothers, when they're breastfeeding, still have those antibodies in them to pass on to their children so that they can develop their own immunity? Come on, people. Don't we see these things? Are we so blinded by information? Oh, I know exactly what it is. We're sheeple. That right there is what it is. Just sheeple. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we wrap up um, <laughs> this aspect of healthy love and get some much needed musical therapy. We'll be right back. Call a friend, tell a friend. Healthy love is on right here. KevinStew.com. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Come on, smile! Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. Or maybe he's teething. Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe... He has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse eMedia Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse eMedia Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse Emedia Group, when being in the moment is priceless.
Miss Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin's too. And the night shift radio show, yo, it thing, at the thing, turn up the thing loud. Whoa. DJ Kevin's too, at the heart of a champion. Never underestimate, just choose him. The silver line behind the dark clouds. DJ Kevin's too, believe him, and that's no doubt. Sell out the night shift radio show, Christine. This is hot to Loud. Sound of the anthem band asking a question what kind of world? I want to say thanks to Reggae Global Entertainment for sponsoring this segment of the show. Reggae Global will act as your booking agent. Take care of your tour management. They can take care of your business registrations, your trademarks, your publishing, your copyrights, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. Give them a call, 754. Sorry, 954. 998 or visit them at reggaeglobalentertainment.com So wrapping up with my information courtesy of Mercola.com Apparently Korean wellness quotes Australian researcher Vera Scheibner a PhD and says who says vaccination is undoubtedly <laughs> uh, vaccination is undoubtedly the single biggest and most preventable cause of de caught death. I would just go and say death on a whole. But caught death. The timing of 80% of the caught deaths 
occur uh, or as we know it um, here in the US and, and, and parts of the Caribbean, crib death. Um, the timing of 80% of these deaths occurring between the second and sixth months is due to the culminative efforts of infections, timing of immunizations, and some inherent specifics in the baby's early developments. In their white paper, Becker and Blacksell also note that one very clear change has to be received that has received publicity is that public health officials are bemoaning the sharp decline in infant vaccinations as parents are not taking their infants into pediatric offices for their regular well baby checks. It's funny, they call them wellness checks, but the babies leave sick. So they go in and you check that they were well that they were well. But when they leave they're sick. In the May 15 issue of the CDC Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, MMWR, a group of authors from the CDC and Kaiser Premature and sorry, Pri Kaiser Premen You see? Yeah, I need to clean these glasses. Um, <laughs> a group of authors from the CDC and Kaiser Permanente reported a sharp decline in provider offers, sorry, in provider orders for vaccines, as well as a decline in pediatric vaccine doses administered. These declines began in early March, around the time infant deaths began declining. Are fewer children dying because their parents are skipping their routine childhood vaccines? Hmm. <laughs> if lives are being saved during the pandemic, then this question is one that really needs some urgent answers. Because that in and of itself is a problem. The lowered infant mortality rate reported in the Health Choice White Paper is also addressed in a June 16, 2020 commentary in the BMJ. Responding to the authors of a paper titled Fewer American Infants Are Dying During the COVID-19 Lockdown, Why? Retired pediatrician Alan S. Cunningham writes during the first 11 weeks of COVID of 2020 through march 14 there were 209 fewer deaths in u.s children under 18 compared to the same period in 2019 so you are looking at 7024 versus 7233 during the 11-week period following the emergency declaration, which now goes up to, Mar to May 30, there were 1,465 fewer deaths in children compared to 2019. So now you're looking at 5,923 versus 7,388. The difference is statistically highly significant. Becker and Blacksill emphasized that the most pronounced mortality decline occurred in infants less than one year. This is confirmed by reviewing the most recent data. There was a substantial and highly significant decline from 2020 weeks 5 through weeks through 11 to weeks 12 through 22, you're talking about 367 to 309 deaths per week. The suggestion that vaccinations could be one factor in the causation of SIDS is not new. 
until properly controlled trials are done, we will be unable to confirm or exclude a causal role for vaccines. So not because you can't confirm it doesn't mean that you're going to exclude it. It will be interesting to see what conclusions can be drawn later on once we have more data and statistics. But if infant vaccinations have a detrimental effect and increase the risk of death, the dramatic drop in SIDS and premature birth during the pandemic would be quite (laughs) instructive. Aside from carefully considering the potential negative impacts of routine vaccinations, another simple strategy can have a major impact. That can have a major impact is a mother's vitamin D level during pregnancy. If there's one thing that I've been talking about over and over and over again, and it keeps coming back over and over and over again, is vitamin D levels. Now, here it comes up as a mother's vitamin D levels. Why is that important? Because a mother is supposed to be breastfeeding that baby. That is why that is important. And Dr. Maricola says, hey, listen, I firmly believe optimizing your vitamin D during pregnancy is one of the most important things you can do for the health of your child. When a child is born deficient in vitamin D, his or her health can be significantly affected. So even before that baby is born and and, and is being breastfed, you know, the nutrients are important. You hear me often refer to bending the tree from its young. This is some real bending right here. Because you're talking about before the child has physically entered our space. The child is here. Once that mother is pregnant, the child is around. But before that child enters our airspace, breathing on his own, his or her own, then it is totally dependent on the mother. And if we're not taking care of our mothers to be, what kind of condition? are the children going to be in? They're going to be dependent on drugs. We're going to have a sick nation. We're going to need these drugs that are being provided, which don't treat the cause, but treat the symptoms. So you'll be stuck with whatever condition you have, even if it's a curable condition. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Here's the problem. It's reality. Research by Grassroots Health has shown pregnant women need a vitamin D blood level of at least 40 nanograms per milliliter to optimize benefits. Having a level of 40 nanograms per milliliter during pregnancy has been shown to lower the risk of preterm birth by 59%. That's... Let's round it up. 60%. Compared to having a level of 20 nanograms per milliliter. And other research has have shown most women can reach a level of 32 nanograms per milliliter when taking 4,000 international units of vitamin D per day. Which is actually six times the recommended daily allowance of 600 international units a day so if you're pregnant if you know someone who is pregnant if you know someone who plans to get pregnant make sure that you or them whether you suggest it or you 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 try to find a way to get it for them get their 25 hydroxy d levels checked 
you, if you have to drag them to to get it checked uh, or just telling them about it they will go get it checked whichever way get it checked and then do whatever it is that you need to do to either maintain it at the level that it needs to be at or get it to the level it needs to go to and then maintain it testing is important to see what your level is so that you can adjust your dosage to fit your body's requirements and as we've talked about several times has been discussed and, and you you check out mercolo.com it has been in it's in several articles Vitamin D may also be crucial to lowering your risk of vitamin of, of COVID-19. We've been talking about it. Vitamin D and magnesium. Check it yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. You really don't. I'm, I'm just a guy presenting some information. Check it yourself. <laughs> You will not, and I repeat, you will not regret it in any way, shape, or form. You will not be disappointed. You're going to thank yourself for taking the time out to go find that little bit of information. To ask that one extra question. In fact, to go ahead and question that healthcare professional that is supposed to be looking out for your well-being. And I say supposed to be because we've heard the stories of kickbacks. We've heard doctors talk about it. And I'm not saying that everything that I present on these shows is a hundred percent right or wrong but i'm definitely saying there has to be some truth to my information and if there's even an ounce of truth then it is worth at least a minute of your time So give it that. Ask the question. Do the little bit of research. See what you come up with. What do you have to lose? Think about that. And then ask yourself, what do you have to gain? Which list is longer? It's Jadan. Jadan. Representing for Jiva. Hey, Aizan. I'm the one I feel. Look at all. Son of the sound of Jadan from his album 369. It's called Youths, they are the future. She never give up on me. No, she never give up on me. Mommy, me know you try your best. That's why me, I go do the rest. All this trouble and the pain. Can't wait till the day me tell you the world.
them stars. If I get rid of so the youth, them cute, them sad. No one say you can't fool them. No, no. Me I beg you school them. Me you stay out of the future. A poor life when a girl of a youth. You see the hands. I follow you good far the way I take you this son and them daughter. Me you stay out. on a Richard Stevens this tribute to healthcare workers this tribute to frontline workers on a whole Son of Yannick. Track called Cherish the Day. I tell you, musical therapy.
Tony, Miss Joanna Marie. Track called Fight No More from her album Simply Irresistible. Thank you, Joanna. Son of Miss and Emperor. It's called Lovers Rock. Yeah. 
Fletcher. It's called Love is Working. This is on the Mama Africa rhythm. That new release. 
Ed Robinson working out with Dati. The rendition of someone to love. It's because of you, I was able to give my heart again. Give me someone to love. Sensational dynamic sound. Shauna Dazzle, Dotty, Suzanne Sultry. Their rendition of Woman in Love. And you know me not leave it Kevin, this one's for you Big up yourself, Shauna does on this one Thank you Shauna Ten minutes before we get out of here This one's so nice, we have to play it twice You. I love 
This is Sonokuzumela's It's called Let's Get Started Don't stress yourself out, baby Don't stress yourself out, baby It's called Let's Get Started Don't stress yourself out, baby Give me just a little of your time Don't worry yourself, pretty lady I'll take care of your heart like it's mine mm-hmm. Just a little of your tender touch Is all I'm asking Don't, Don't you be nervous. nervous Believe me, there's nothing to fear I'll be around to wipe all your tears, girl Oh, I wanna be the shoulder you lean on I'll be the friend you depend on I'll be a shelter in the storm And when you feel down and out And need someone to call upon Don't you worry about a thing I'll be right over, baby And you let me say Let's get started Girl, I love you It's long overdue And you feel it too Oh baby Let's get started Cause you're the one That I'm waiting on No more loving on the run No, no Lay your head on my shoulder baby And tell me what's on your mind My arms are waiting for you Don't overlook, my love is tight It's a blessing I can hold you The way that I do Girl, I need you in my life I wanna build my whole world around you Let's get started, girl, I love you It's long overdue And you feel it too Girl, I know, baby Let's get started, cause you're the one That I'm waiting for No more loving on the run Never you stress yourself, my baby Give me just a little of your time Don't worry yourself, pretty lady I'll take care of your heart like it's mine mm-hmm. Just a little of your tender touch Is all I'm asking, don't, don't you be nervous. nervous Believe me, there's nothing to fear I'll be around to wipe all your tears, girl Oh, I wanna be the shoulder you lean on I'll be the friend you depend on I'll be a shelter in the storm Let's get started, girl, I love you It's all over to This is the real storm. Always try to do better. We are gonna get it. Gotta live for your love. Needed musical therapy.
I live for I do live for Ethiopia The hours between 10 and midnight Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday And we wrap it up tomorrow Real Talk Wednesday Ethiopia I'm thinking of Ja, I live for your love Hey baby I just, just want to get close to you And this is how we wrap it up tonight We're getting close Sunshine. Peter G working out with Jonah Marie Their rendition of Close to You Thank you each and everyone for tuning in tonight. Truly, I appreciate love it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. From right here in South Florida, I bid you good night. Until we do it again at 10 Eastern. Right after Marlon with a real rocker show. Remember to catch Donnie Walker tomorrow morning, 6 till 10. WGLRO, Clinton Lindsay. From midday to three, ClintonLindsay.com. I'll be back here, KevinStew.com, 10 till midnight. Y'all take care until then, yeah? Come on, Joanna, follow me, say. One and all, you're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The night shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. <laughs>